Hello and welcome everybody. I am back making more videos and for this video we are I will be showing you the ins and outs of Mountain Blade Warband. This is a tutorial, so hopefully for any newcomers to this game this will help you out. So first what we need to do is start a new game. Uh I already clicked on that, so then you go to this screen and it will just basically says if you play a female character it will be more challenging and possibly interesting than if you were to choose a male character since male characters in this time and day and age are usually the dominant so for this tutorial we're just going to go the easy route and choose the male so after you do that you get to choose one of these to help define your skills this first one is probably one of the important ones considering this is the father of whoever your character is so usually the easiest route to go is an impoverished noble which get, means you're going to be uh, have an easier time at the start since you're already a nobleman and you don't have to work your way up through the ranks but feel free to choose any of these really I mean all all of six of them make a pretty interesting game but for this tutorial we're just gonna go the easy route and so now this one we gotta choose what we were or uh, during the life so as I said before easy route page at nobleman's court but these five will help define your skills so say instead of going nobleman's court you choose to go a stepchild and so you'll probably have uh, less experience in some places and more experience in others so we're just gonna go with a uh, uh, whatever that was uh, nobleman court and then we're gonna go with a square but feel free to choose whatever you wish each they will have different skills and stuff and for the last one this will determine one final of your skills and then for this we're we'll just to personal revenge and now you have this little story explanation you can pause the video if you wish to read the full extent but we're just gonna go right in and begin the adventure so since we chose the nobleman as what our father was we get to choose a banner and this game has a decent variety of banners to choose from uh, so once you get satisfied with the banner that you wish to choose for your own faction feel free to uh, go ahead with that so for this tutorial I'm just gonna choose a random one since there's all these pages I'm just gonna choose this one and so this right here is a personal preference it's going to be easier if you do with the allow to quit without saving but for those who want to have it more interesting and every mistake you make will hurt you or hinder you depending on your outlook this will be better but for this tutorial uh, we'll go without having to save when we quit. So these skills which are presented so far since the skills we already have are based on the variety of option choices you have chosen beforehand so your skills may not look exactly the same as what I have here and since this is so basically these skills will help determine how good of a fighter you are, trainer, overall uh, game. So for a must have will be iron flesh. This is your HP or your hit points. So each iron flesh point you have will determine your health which I usually try to max it out. Power strike is how hard you hit so that's also a good one to go with 
and then all the others are probably pretty good whatever your preference is leadership is a must prisoner management you can take or leave it trainer however you'll definitely probably want at least one or more uh, and also you'll want first aid first aid will help out a lot when you get injured in battle and stuff so we can put some in intelligence and maybe one in charisma just for fun trade will help with selling goods and stuff and when you go become more powerful and have fiefs uh, there's this trade penalty which will also help lower that cost but for this purpose of tutorial we'll just go without that we'll probably put another one in first aid maybe one in surgery and our rating writing but rating writing is pretty good I'm gonna put the last one in trainer and then f feel free to name your character whatever but for this purpose tutorial if I can spell it right there we go and then you have these points to put into whatever you want so we're off now for the character creation this it's pretty decent I guess it's not the most elaborate out there but you can go in pretty big depths of moving and changing and making your character how you want them to look male or female but for this I'm just gonna randomize and choose one they're not necessarily the best looking model type the meshes and everything but hey you get what you get uh, this is the vanilla so and what I mean by vanilla is this is just no mods or anything I'm gonna go with this and maybe change the hair color ah whatever my mouse is being weird okay that seems suitable alright so there are five no six kingdoms that you can start in each kingdom has its own uh, areas style and special units I'll get to the special units later but for this I'm just going to choose the first one and the Swadian start and feel free to read this you can pause the video and read this thing I'm just gonna go continue for the sake of time as this page too All right. so when you first start off you're in this town alleyway and there's gonna be one bandit trying to come and kill you so we are gonna take care of this guy real fast Ba -ba -doom, ba -doom. He goes down for the count, and there's the merchant coming to give you your first quest. Feel free to pause the video if you want to actually read stuff. But I'm on a, trying to keep this video relatively short since it's going to be a long video nonetheless. So feel free to read whatever take the time to pause and read it if you wish so uh, this guy is basically telling you that he wants you to go out and find some men or some troops to help him uh, get his brother back from some kidnappers so you go to these villages and you can recruit volunteers this one happens to have two so this big map and yes it is huge so there are the six kingdoms the uh, cyan or blue kingdom is the kingdom of the Nords the orange kingdom is the kingdom of the Swadians which is where we started out the green kingdom is the kingdom of the Rodox the yellow kingdom is the kingdom of the Serenids and the pink or purple kingdom is the kingdom of the Connate. 
And then finally, the brown or gray kingdom is the kingdom of the Vigier. Vigier. Don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's all right. So each of the six kingdoms has its own little special unit. So uh, the specialty units, like I said before, the kingdom of Swadia has the specialty unit of having excellent lancers or knights. The knights can do heavy damage and can take a lot of damage. So it's a nice thing to have. And it's generally an easy play because they're all in cavalry. You can move across the map pretty fast and they're pretty good all around. And then you have the Rodox, which are primarily focused in spearmen and crossbowmen for their soldiers. You have the Serenates, or the Serenate Sultanate, which has the full name. And their main uh, troop base is the Archers and Memluks. The Memluks are similar to the Swadian Knights, but they, instead of carrying swords and lances, they usually just carry uh, like a mace and lances, depending. I mean, they're like, they are knights, but they're not as good as the Swadian knights, since the Swadians are trained to be excellent lancers and swordsmen. The Serenids are trained to be excellent macemen and fighters. Not necessarily the best lancers out there, but they'll get the job done. The archers, though, oh, they're just supposed to be the best in a game, as well as the Vigir, Vigir, however you want to say it. Uh, okay, now we're going to the Khanate, Khajiit Khanate, and their main focus is horse archer. They have the archers who ride horses obviously and they get the job done because they can outmaneuver their enemies and fire at them from long distances without having to run away like a regular archer would have to stand on the ground and if they see a cavalry coming for them they have to stop firing and run whereas these guys the reason that makes them so unique is their archers they can just ride around the battlefield shooting away. And if a cavalry, say, a Swadian knights chasing them, and uh, the Ch Swadian knight is chasing a horse archer, so the horse archer can continue galloping away from the Swadian knight on their fast horses and continue to fire the Swadian knight while the Swadian knight gets hammered by arrows and is pretty slow because. He's on a uh, heavy armored horse as well as wearing heavy armor himself, so it doesn't his their horses don't usually go as fast. That's making them unique. They also have lances, but they're not as skilled. They get the job done. Just they're just they're more of a protective unit for the archers than really any real damage. But that's my personal opinion. You can find new uses and of course you have the Vagir, 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 one of those has to be right. Um, they have knights as well which aren't as good as the Swadian knights in Lancership but they get the job done. The archers will go arrow to arrow with this um, Serenades. So that's just, I mean, this is what the game has said, is shown, but may not always be true. But for this tutorial, we'll just skip that and move on to the next kingdom. Okay, finally, the Nord Kingdom. They have, their troops are usually heavy footmen and archers.
They have the Nords and the Rodox do not have any cavalry of any kind, so they have to make up with for it with their infantry and archers. The Nords are a relatively difficult army to have as a beginner because it's all footmen, but it, there's all once you. So yeah, um, moving on. So basically, what this game is is it's an action RPG RTS simulator. The reason I say all those is the action part has um, basically a lot of combat, six kingdoms at war, trying to fight for control. You have the RPG elements, which is the f reason I say RPG, there is no real story you have to follow in this game, but I say RPG because the story you have is your own. You make the story. You can become the most valiant of knights and heroes of the land, and you can ride on with your undefeated army and unite Calradia, which is the land's name, or you can be a thief, you can be a pillager, you can be a dishonorable knight or a dishonorable wretched or whatever you want to call it. So the path is truly yours and yours alone to decide whether you go lean one way or the other, or gray area, yada yada. And you can do so with exquisite details. You can role play out the butt. You have uh so this the inventory screen is pretty self explanatory. Inventory items go here, your armor goes here, weapons, horse. So, um, the variants of different types of armor in this game, pretty expensive, somewhat. Uh, I'm gonna go to Praven to show you some armor. Oh yes, tournaments. Tournaments are a big thing in this game. For, for what you need tournaments for, you ask it for this right here, character renown. The higher this number is, the more likelihood of you getting fiefs, property, castles, villages, towns. This right here will determine how successful you are, and it will give you. Not necessarily success, but it will let people know who the hell you are, what you're doing, and whether they should adore you, hate you, or keep an eye on you. The honor rating system, as far as I know, the higher your honor, the less likely it is you'll get, um, how do I put this? Yeah, you'll get, like, kicked out of a kingdom or something. So if you have very, very low honor rating, like it's in the negatives or something, I think the chances that you'll get kicked out of a, like you'll be banished from a kingdom, say, say I was a vassal of Swadia, and you can become a vassal by talking to the king of their respective kingdom. So if I wanted to become a vassal of Swadia, I would have to go to King Halaus and say, my lord, I want to become a vassal or something. Um, so, oh, right, because our renown isn't high enough. We cannot join the feast because, yeah, we have to distinguish ourselves, which is a nice feature. So in order to distinguish yourselves, you either have to go fight battles elsewhere or join tournaments. And tournaments is the primary way to receive your renown. So, um, it's, this is going to be a long video. So, I don't, I'll show you tournaments later, I guess, I don't know. You can figure the tournament stuff out. 
I'm sure. Um, I would not advise doing a hard difficulty in the tournaments until you get your grasp on what's going on. But enough of that. Okay, so say later on in the game you wish uh, you receive a thief. And the thief say, say you became a vassal or a lord of Swadia and King Harlaus has lost Praven and you guys taken it back and you receive the town of Praven. So in this aspect the the town of Praven in order to get uh, the maximum potential of income from it you'll want the king to have Asgad, Vedar, and Gizm to be owned by other lords. Be why? Because these lords will patrol around Praven and when they need more troops or something they'll garrison inside your town giving you rent and such I mean they give you money because if you stay in a town like it says here you must like if you want to wait here you have to pay a certain amount of money or in this case dinars is the currency in this game we covered the basics raising an army I I would highly recommend going town to town um, seeing what quests people have or may, when your army gets big enough like here we'll complete this quest real fast that this guy has given us I've been doing a lot of talking oh whoopsie <laughs> okay so recruit oh my god okay so it's gonna be picking teeth I guess pulling teeth picking teeth what are the phrases I'm gonna have to go up here, recruit more because apparently that last one didn't want to have a lot of people come. Yes. If all right, so the speed is how fast your uh, party travels. You have all these uh, lords going to the feast. The party travel is pretty important in this game early on and can be pretty important later on too so keep an eye on that right now we're doing 6.2 oh yeah this one has a lot of so that's pretty good considering um, the faster your party is the better they can do at battle and getting out of tight spots like if there's a massive army trying to chase you down if you have fast speed you will be able to get away from them pretty easily. Also, for the troops, you must pay them, obviously. I mean, a, a, a soldier that doesn't get paid isn't a soldier at all, is he? So, uh, this will impact morale, which is also a key factor. The higher the morale, the better your troops will do in battle. The lower the morale, troops will start to desert your army and will probably not do as good in battle. So, we go back to this town. We're going to finish this quest. And after we finish this quest, where is that? Okay, there's the merchant. Very well, I shall hunt for bandits. Alright, so this quest will take us here. No, but I brought steel. We have 11 troops fit for their four. Onward to battle. You can press R for first person. For those people who don't like to play games in third person. So you can have the first person aspect. I mean, look, I'll just let them kill them. Might doesn't take long. They get 
completely destroyed. Moving on. Alright, so. Spare me. Alright. So we know where the hostage is held. We know where his brother is being held. And we have this armor and we can equip. And that's about it. So we go to return. Soldiers are ready to upgrade. So. Militia. We have the troop trees of each thing. I'll get into that uh, probably in a different video, considering how long this is this video has been going. So, yeah, basically you can get quests from people. You can raise an army. You can become a king. You can help a king become their own king. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. You can purchase property to gain you more money. You are the legend of your own time in this game. You can either become the legend of great wonder or you can be a tyrant. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. I hope this video has helped somebody. I hope that you guys will Hopefully try this game out if you haven't gotten the chance yet. Steam is always putting this game on sale. I believe the current price right now is like under $5. Yeah, so I thank you for watching. Like, subscribe if you like this video. Hope this uh, little tutorial helps explain some things. I'll get into more details later. In a different video, if anyone has questions, please comment. I love comments. I will ask me any questions. I will hopefully reply as best as I can and as soon as I can. So, with that, I thank you for watching and good day or good night or good morning, wherever you are.